Hello everybody, Anthony is here, and today I'm very happy to present you all guys a talk with George Tieffer. He's been a great 3D code sculptor, and he's been using 3D code for about 10, 11 years, uh, along with ZBrush as well, but now he completely switched to 3D code, and he will be sharing, he's going to share some of his techniques and tips uh, on sculpting inside 3D code and how he does it in his particular workflow. He also has a YouTube channel, I will give the link in the description, and we want to give credit where the credit is due, because Josh used concepts from Ivan Amundsen, and he's also another great artist, uh, concept artist, uh, the link will be in the description. So enjoy the talk. Hey Josh, so, so Josh, we've talked about just before the recording, but Josh, you've been using 3D code for how long? Like, no. Now... before it ran properly, like, You'd make like one little noodle, like a blob of space, and the thing would just go like, yeah, <laughs> it would just barely um run at early on. But yeah. so ZBrush was established and, and going, mm -hmm. but what I, I just for fun, I would just screw around with 3D coat, like really early version. Because I'm like, man, if only we had something like ZBrush that ran quickly that gave you this level of freedom. If I want to cut a hole, I just cut a hole right in the middle of something. Like, holy shit. So um, I've been using it since I, I mean, the very early version, since it was kind of not usable. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they're talking about 2011, like 12? Yeah. Or yeah. earlier, even maybe yeah. like 2010, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I stayed with it. I, I didn't really use it for work until about 20. Well, I, I did use a little bit doing um, some concept art, like kind of like stuff in 2012, but mm -hmm. in a more reliable way, like doing modeling stuff, I, I used it in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I'm like, oh crap, every time I go back to ZBrush, I feel like I'm not having as much fun. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, you know, was the industry standard or not, I was like, it's kind of just what I like using. So I just kept, you know, goofing around, making my own presets and tools. And it was like nobody on earth was using it, but me is how I yeah. felt. And I feel like it's really growing. There's guys putting out videos and things like that. And obviously what you're doing. So. Yeah. Um, uh, and now you're saying you pretty much for your concept stuff, at least you switched over to or everything, like for all your sculpting, you switched over completely to 3D code, right? For better or worse, yeah. 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 I mean, obviously, the best tool I think for designing is still 2D. You know, like mm -hmm. I like to draw on pencil and paper, then kind of ink it up or whatever on the iPad. Then I throw that in Photoshop and paint it. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, like the, I've have done lots of stuff from scratch in 3D coat. Um, lots of it, but uh, I go back and forth. You know, you're gonna. If you interview me, like, and if you did it each week, yeah. it seem like I'm schizophrenic. I might tell you something. Yeah, about yeah. yeah. Way to work or whatever. But, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, let's kind of get into that, like, uh, maybe check some of your, like, how you do stuff. Like, so we just talked uh, that you use a lot of presets, which I, I don't use. I've never used it. And I don't, because it's really called a pretty big software and it can adapt to your needs, right? So some people get, some features that they really like and reuse them all, all over the place. So I'm really curious about presets. Uh, if you could you know, talk about those. Um, let's let, yeah, well, jump so, to the sculpt room. Yeah, I mean, if I show, like, for instance, the new, like, this is the new 3D coat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you kind of, I'm. there's a little bit less reliance on um, presets, like, off the shelf, it works better, I think, than the older version. So that's credit to them. And um, by the way, the new to the code is twenty twenty two. The latest one I have is two thousand twenty two dot yeah. thirty one. Yeah. Um, the one I still, because I put so much effort into making presets, I kind of still prefer it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, for, for now, anyways, is uh, it's this version. Um, it's a uh, version four point nine. Yeah, four point nine seven two. I mean, you know, an example of a preset is I took this general clay, I 
I decided I wanted it to have um, this particular alpha on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I just screwed around with the, you know, there's um, settings that, that I didn't really change, but the, this stuff is all different in the new version, by the way. So that's yeah. why I have to adapt to the new version. Yeah. But, you know, it, it makes a kind of rake that I like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, raking is something that is like, commonplace in in clay sculpting but mm -hmm. like super not used that much but um i do like to use it in, in 3d code um, yeah i mean i still uh, and can you maybe go over like you know if you want you to do the fresh preset how would you do that like if you had like um, a new okay, alpha so like, let's say i i have this one and it's a pinch tool right yep. um and i let's see Okay, so it's really pinchy. Yep. Maybe I don't want it to be so pinchy. So the strength is here, you know, and I'm gonna yeah. make it like um so that it it's kind of like this. Yeah. What, Not this too intense. What I wanted for whatever reason. Um you know the alpha I'll keep whatever, but uh just go to add preset. Um, you, you know what to store. So I always turn radius off. I find this pretty annoying when mm -hmm. the radius saved because it always goes back to being the same size. Um, turn the camera off. You don't want the camera to snap yeah. each time you yeah. kind of brush. But I have used that for rendering because sometimes you don't want to lose the frame, the mm -hmm. angle you're on. That's just a little cheat because there's no timeline in here. Anyway, yeah. go to add preset, rename it. Um, And then you can put a hotkey on it, you know, I, mm -hmm. whatever. And I always put the hotkey because going through here and like clicking on each one, that's yeah. why they're kind of, they're named pretty poorly because mm -hmm. I, I hardly ever look at these things. I just yeah. click on, you know, I have this one, I just call it K and it does yeah. this, uh, you know, this was from ZBrush, this alpha. Yeah. Um, and like I have different versions of the same brush like, and you can stack them, right? So. For instance, I, I use this a lot to kind of feel out um, mm -hmm. the surface. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is originally originally the rapid brush, right? It is. Yeah. And, you know, like I make a version of the draw brush that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I took the damn standard alpha. Mm -hmm. Okay, alpha from, from ZBrush. Yeah, which they have their own that's a little bit like it in the Artman mm -hmm. pack. But I didn't want to change it at all so i just i made it like like that mm -hmm. um but yeah like you like i made um one of these brushes that you know the flattened curve is really low or the depth is really low and then just a slightly different one because maybe i need to be more aggressive right mm -hmm. or maybe i want it to behave differently like this one i do like single strokes with it mm -hmm. Um, uh, and how many how many brushes like do you have of, um, like presets, which you can all commonly use like five six? I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> or like twenty. Well, the thing I have a whole set for surface mode, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I have brushes that you see how it smooths. Yeah, and they put it in, um, which is is pretty useful. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, and you can works with decimate pretty well yeah um and then you have a different set for voxels so by the way yeah. uh so so, so what's the I, diff sorry uh, what's the difference between the 4.9 and the 2022 like um or is it kind of this stuff is the same you were talking about other things so um there's just certain brushes that I made here that yep. don't work anymore because they, they redesigned their brush engine. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, true, true. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, I just have to build more pre... Like, I have to kind of start over from scratch a little bit yeah. in, uh, in the new one. Mm -hmm. Like, the new one has more brushes that 
off the shelf just kind of work better. Mm-hmm. And eventually I will make my way there. I mean, there's just certain things that I got really used to. Like, um, uh, let's say I go back here. Um, you know, I made a preset. Sometimes I run out of hotkeys and I got to um, reestablish the hotkeys. Yeah, key. it's quite a few. That's a lot, but you yeah. know, I know that my name. Yeah. Here we go. Um, like I put this, let's say, on hotkey one or something, right? Use a yeah. lot. Um, you know, uh, that I don't like when that happens. Um, yeah, so this one is like, uh, what's, it's, a, like uh, it's not an on plane. Uh, how do you activate it? Just here? Uh, just say on plane. Oh, yeah, on plane. Have, made a hotkey for that which is what yeah. it's um f8 yeah and uh um, I, I use a lot of on plan but i usually don't use the points right so you use the points which you can then quickly move around yeah because yeah. one problem with i think a lot of digital sculpting is it can become mushy mm-hmm. you know ever since the very first zbrush there's a problem with mushiness which if you go back to clay sculpting you know dudes have been using wire cutters and yeah knives breaks and all this stuff since centuries right Mm -hmm. um so that's why early zebra stuff had a lot of like mushy stuff and it's it's just a problem to not be able to get an angle to go the way you want you know like you kind of have to move it then like you stand standard and where they intersect you know there's a little indent like it gets like a mess so i'd like to have a thing that it just constrains like you can't and i understand that yeah i mean a little more dynamic um, yeah what were you gonna say? No, I mean like yeah, I mean I understand what you mean. Like it really puts you in control of the shape, right? So you you know how it's gonna how it's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, from there, you know, you can always um not leave it all chiseled, right? You can mm-hmm. sometimes my hotkeys get a little crazy. I have a lot of 3D code open. Yeah, yeah. So if you want, you know, I can show like the work from the other um 3D codes so I can close them and that'll Yeah, sure, sure. Of my computer run i think running a bunch of them at once equals a lot of weird yeah i mean i can see you have a lot of other stuff open i think so it's also yeah everything's open so yeah. um let me just close some shit by uh showing okay so okay. whatever okay so this was um made in the yeah this one's cool yeah um you know i got render going Using the John McClay shader. And when you started, you just started with like a blob, right? So you just start to sculpt, sculpt, sculpt out, outwards. Um, I'll show you how I've been working these days. Yeah. I start yeah. like almost ridiculously low res. Yeah. And it's almost like as low res as I can handle because the more low res it is, the more nimble 3D coat is, right? Yeah. You know, you can make strips, things just go out in the air and whatever. And it's like, once you, it's just the same thing with real clay too. You know, people heat up their clay so it's more malleable. Mm-hmm. And then it, it gives hard, hard clays are good for detail. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of analogous, like this is kind of similar. Um, yeah, I've never thought about it. I've never thought about it. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so like uh, this guy was made in the... Um, the new version, which the new version has a lot of advantages, like, um, you know, when the muscle brush is really cool with the bar setting, you know, if you want. I've never, I've never tried that, actually. Oh, it's great, you know. Yeah. Like, this is, you know, that's why I do plan on switching fully to this. Uh, so, um, so, wait, so what are you using right now? It's called, a, so it's muscle. Ah, muscle, okay, muscle brush, but with the uh, square alpha or something like that. Oh, bar, yeah, a two profile bar. Okay, good. Bar. Yes. And um, I use it all over the place on this um, character, you know. Yeah that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's really rough, like low res, but uh, the idea is as you build yeah, up. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you can always, um, uh, there's like toothpaste with a rake on it, you know. Yeah. Or kind of equalizing these um, surfaces. Yeah. And I only bump up the res kind of when I feel like it. Um, mm-hmm. There's a technique that I, I add when I want to add more detail. Like 
the thing is, this is going to be kind of low res, right? Yeah. This is not high res. Like, um, eventually what I end up doing sometimes is uh, I make a layer on top of it. Um, and I usually, let's see. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but um, oh, that's, that's I'll just show you real quick. Yeah, because you can make like an isolated layer that has a lot of detail to it, you know? Um, yeah. Let's see, do I have any steady, I turn that steady stroke off. Um, any, anyway, this um, technique, so instead of trying to like increase the resolution the whole uh, sculpt, you just create a separate high res layer to add, add these little guys. Yeah, I mean it depends. Sometimes, like if you go into surface mode and you want to work that way, yeah, you can actually make it as detailed as you want. But the thing is, sometimes you can't use those fun tools, right? Those fun mm -hmm. voxel tools, right? Like, um, you know, on, on this guy, if I want to add details i mean what's crazy is i've made characters like for work and stuff that was 100 million polygons using just this mode right it's kind of like sculptures pro yeah and, and and you can just kind of keep going for almost ever and you can even you know decimate it and keep going but it's because i don't know maybe because it's using the gpu or whatever i mean your ability to add detail is kind of crazy yeah. but yeah. i will say that the tools are still better in voxel mode you know mm -hmm. and that's why sometimes i don't go this route you know like it depends like if there's a lot of flatter surfaces i'll just kind of so when what are you saying like in surface mode you can have a, a lot more density than in um, in voxel yeah right? it's run. Like, yeah it's, it's just low like it's on brush right so yeah. i can sit here and just smooth and it's kind of nuts, really. Because yeah. auto-decimating, you know, right? Yeah, auto-decimating. Yeah. So, like, I there's mean, no end yeah. to the detail um, in this mode. Um, I just don't love the mode that much. Okay. I mean, you know, it. it you, like I said, you catch me on next week, and I'll, I'll tell you which one <laughs> I like. Right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times I use them together, too, right? Yeah. So... Um, uh, so, so anyhow, um, yeah. this is a new duty code. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so we talked about presets and some other stuff, but you wanted to mention how you start the sculpt, uh, from like a sort of scratch. Yeah. And, so yeah. why don't I just show you, go through these so I can close them. Like, sure, sure. Like yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. So I do a lot of studying. You know, yeah. and it always feels like not enough studying, yeah. but um, a good practice for me sometimes is to grab a 3D scan. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah. It, you know, I just try and replicate it, honestly. Yeah. You know, it's just like taking a journey through the figure, really. Yeah. Like, um, I'll give the example, like, you just don't know the body that well until you've seen it, put it in yeah. your mental library. Like, one thing I want to capture better on here is um, the way... This is like your trapezius, and yeah. this is going into your chromium process, you know, the way it makes that almost seem like unified bump. Mm -hmm. uh, just something that's to know about, you know, there's endless things like this to, to learn and know. Yeah. Um, and so, to, that's you so know, cool. if I could do more of this, I, I certainly will. Um, yeah. How long did it take you to, to if you remember, uh, approximately to, to do the copy? I meant to practice. These don't take too long because it's all there, right? Yeah. You know, you, you know, you just sit there and do it. I mean, I just do it. I was just doing this after work, you know, mm -hmm. maybe for like a week, you know, mm -hmm. just like when work ends, you know, start picking away at it. And obviously like the hand is nowhere worked on and it's mm -hmm. pretty rough. Like the, the forms, mm -hmm. but turn off that real time render. Um, but I mean, the push and so much other stuff is captured pretty much really, really well. Yeah, because the thing is, I don't work like as a modeler anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did for 15 years. I never said I was that great at it, but 
um, I'm not trying to make stuff that is really perfectly refined for, you know, to show up in a production at the end of the pipeline, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I hope, you know, what I try and do is just make concept art. I mean, a lot of times I, for work, if I do a sculpt, I'll show the sculpt, but then I have to paint over it anyways. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's guys that like to throw it in substance and, and just kind of um, essentially treat it like a model. And, and you know, like, um, I forget his name, Arson something. He, he he's rendered, his stuff looks amazing. But for me, I'm, I'm the most impatient artist I've ever met <laughs> by me. So I don't even want to mess with texturing. I just paint over it like it was a painting and say, screw it, you know? Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of how I, I do it and and so a lot of times i don't need the surfaces to look perfect you know and um i'm also a fan of like gestural um sculptors in real life mm-hmm. like um you ever hear of paulo trebetskoy no i haven't okay yeah look him up that's really hard to spell <laughs> um and there's rembrandt bugatti is another guy who's uh-huh. doing like mystic sculpting i'm not saying I know how to pull it off in 3D, but that's sort of something I'm interested in and always striving for. So um, here's, so I'm a fan of the artist Evan Edmondson, okay? Mm-hmm. He um, he does like a Twitch stream. I mean, people all know him, his stuff is all over Art Station. Mm-hmm. But to me, he's just like unworldly good. And I hate that he's like 12 years younger than me because like, <laughs> what? how's a guy get this good? But he is that good. And he actually, he's a, one of the few guys online that he'll just show you everything. He'll yeah. show you, here's how I start. Here's how I study. Mm-hmm. Here's how I paint. Here's every layer I've ever used. And no worries. So that guy's a great guy. I wanted to do a study of his stuff because I'm like, I'm tired of looking at this stuff. I got to try and mm-hmm. one. It's, it's driving me crazy. So mm-hmm. I, I planned on finishing this one more. Um, this is, I think the, he named the character Mirha. I don't know. He made up a, his own names for yeah. all his characters. Uh, but, you know, when I look at this guy, for me, it's like a pretty much smallest Finnish sketch because you got the, you got the hands, you got the face and the clothing, you know, walked out. So what do you want actually to finish here? Kind of. I wanted it all raked down to perfection. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. I wanted to be able to zoom in. Oh, and, yeah. Like, have these surfaces not perfect but like you know they're really rough from a distance it's not but i wanted it you know raked really clean like more finely i mean Mm -hmm. but the thing is like i wanted if you look at his concept and you look at the costume yeah this wolf is far better like you know this is an abomination compared to the wolf (laughs) and basically what happened is i was working on it and then i'm like oh i'll post my progress and then the ADD kicked in. And I'm like, oh, let me go do something else. And you know, <laughs> I, I just, I essentially just haven't gotten back to it. But I actually want to finish it more. Um, but there comes a point when you're like a, you know, if your job is to do concept art. You, you can't just spend all your time sculpting other people's shit. Otherwise, you're kind of sending the wrong message. So I'm like, all right, maybe I ought to make some of my own designs more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have stuff I'm gonna work on for for myself. Like I drew out this dude. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I'm gonna sculpt him up soon. Um, I think I still do a better job when I pre-plan it like this. So. Yeah. And the mushroom guy. Did you have a sketch for the mushroom guy? No, and the mushroom guy wasn't even supposed to be a design. Mm. Um, I was gonna study clothing. Yeah. I was looking at Japanese clothing. Yeah. And then I just got carried away. I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. turning into a mushroom guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. It started to look like a mushroom to me, so I call him mushroom guy. You yeah. know, but um, but so like back to that like starting process. How do you start? Okay, so oh. like say I close a bunch of this stuff, right? Okay, okay, close. Okay, that's neat and all, so we're just gonna close it. Um, one more guy. I can just create it. We can create a new scene here. So that's the clay shader on more shit. Um, uh, let's see. So, so, okay. I, I, I'll be honest. I still like to start off in this. I'm, I'm a little torn. I'm a little torn. Yeah. If you sit with me next week, I might be using the <laughs> Yeah. But right now um, we're in a, in a version of 4.9. Oh, it's okay. Let's, uh, 4.972. So, 
Okay. So, um, I think that I like to start off really low res, like say I get like a base or something. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. Oh, yeah, lower as like sometimes more than you think you need it to be. Mm -hmm. um, make sure on plane is on on and um, you know you kind I kind of use the camera. You see how I'm moving with the camera direction. Mm -hmm. um, You know, it yep. doesn't look like a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, of course. But, but you know, it's kind of like you want to start to see something, right? Like when mm -hmm. you look in the clouds, you know, you're not being very literal. Mm -hmm. So to me, um, I see a guy walking and he, he's going to be setting, he's offering something, right? Like mm -hmm. cookies or some shit, but he won't be selling cookies. These might be like, you know, yeah. living Mushrooms. I don't know, like creatures that look like vegetables. Head on a dish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe in the, where you're living right now, they sell this. Cause, I don't know. The um, all the different cuisine you probably have to try out. But um, actually, I don't know where you are right now. But um, yeah. I just kind of carve away at. Uh, now, so one thing I'll say is this is very like e ephemeral, right? Th these mm -hmm. points in voxel mode are very, like if you go like this, you just mm -hmm. annihilate everything that you did. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just use like, these brushes tend not to destroy as much. Mm -hmm. um, but I might have to give him, sorry, some um, longer way. And uh, you know, um, at a certain point, I end up flipping the mesh a lot, just like people do in Photoshop, because um, you never know how wonky this really is mm -hmm. being so asymmetrical. But um, so you see how I just cut through, there's a little bit of leg action. Yeah, yeah. So one thing I don't like to do that much, people start from a sphere and they pull out parts of the sphere. That shit drives me crazy. Like it, everything, I just don't like to, I mean, I do do it a little myself, but I try to kind of get large mounds of things and, and carp away at them a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm pushing, you know, in certain directions. And, and you know you, you can kind of do this in ZBrush. I just think here it's a little more free, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be dynameshing out of super low res and kind of get a similar process going. Um, but just with these, it's kind of like working in um, Minecraft or something. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know, like, like it's really. Um, like these points uh, and, but uh, aren't you afraid if you kind of increase the resolution will won't it go su su super yeah of okay. course yeah. It, it, trust me that get that used to drive me nuts i used to i mean i've lost a lot of sleep on behalf yeah, of yeah. you know, okay because i'm like ah it almost works the way i want but then for some reason like i look at it the next day it looks like shit or the yeah. process isn't quite what i want it to be you know and, and so um Yes, I mean, I thought of that. So, you know, one thing I, you know, I took like a Simon Lee class and he always talks about, the, you know, getting the body language right and making sure like torso, pelvis and, you know, head are doing the right thing. So, yeah, I'm trying to keep that in mind. Um, at this stage, it, I don't tweak that as much, but later tweak, tweaking limbs pays a lot. Of, you know, pays off a lot. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you always happen, almost always, is the head and neck will be off to one side too much. I don't know why that is, but kind of watching for that. 
I mean, you can do a quick flip. I, I flip it on X, and if it looks too janky, you know, you just tweak it while you're on this view. And by the way, so you use the phrase as a selection mask, or wait? Um... Oh, yeah, I put that on a hockey too. Mm -hmm. The lasso freeze, because if you freeze something and then my transpose tool is T, is my hotkey for is T, right? Mm -hmm. I um I put it all in a hotkey, so one kind of turns into the other. Um, uh, but why did you use a freeze tool for transpose? I just prefer like it. The transpose, if you like, say I want to use transpose in a lasso mode. Yeah. I gotta go and switch it and stuff. I just don't feel like messing with it. Okay. You know, like, like right now, um, my transpose is. Yeah, like gra gradients. Align, yeah. align, yeah. But the gradient, um, and I'm just not. Okay. Wanting to. But so, this stage of the process is really like, you know, if you, it's kind of of a subtle thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And things can disappear, and you should just be okay with that, you know, because it's because mm -hmm. it, it, it's ultimately faster in the end for me personally. I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, other people. No, I mean, it's start. cool to see you, how how you approach yourself. Yeah, other people might want to start more high res. Um, and maybe this foot's like picking up or something. Um, and you know you don't stay here forever. If you, if you yeah. I mean, you can. Like, like I've worked. Um, my phone off. That's okay. um, if you, uh, you can you can step up very gradually and say, you know, I'm gonna just go up to one low res to the next low res, whatever. Um, and that's I've done that too. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I say screw it and I go to the high res after a few iterations of being on in this kind of low res mode, you know. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we won't have that much time to do it from start to finish. No, but um, so anyhow. I don't. One thing I ought to do is do tutorial because I never showed any of this process and I have that really crappy tutorial. I'm sorry for everybody who has seen it. But um, uh, anyhow, it, it, basically I go this low res until I feel like it's an obstacle to itself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And here's what I do. So I, I just go on, you click on surface. Yeah. I... And, and suddenly it, it like, captures a lot more of it than if, if I went just to, to make an example, if I duplicate this right and I just step it up. Yeah, it will be on my mush. It, it kind of smooths out too much. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like you're losing something. So um, I tend to just uh, do this and then it'll, you go back to Voxel mode. And what I try and do is it's at about 4,000 right now. Mm -hmm. So I might want to go a little more than that, like maybe twelve thousand, or sorry, a little more than double. Like I do, step it up a little gradually. Yeah. And it, you know, you might have lost some edges, but they weren't that great to begin with. You know, it's <laughs> just. Um, but it, it does capture more. Yeah. Ultimately, you don't lose as much, and it, the more you step up the resolution, the less you're going to lose. Um, and I'm using um, all. Of these kind of voxely draw tools, right? Yeah. Like toothpaste, muscle, um, sphere is a major one because these don't like. Um, and and an, an important thing, like in this mode, is just knowing like how to move. Like, say you want to make something come out. Yeah, yeah. Don't just draw it out like this and try. I mean, you can move it, and I do move stuff for a reason but you can see how it blew it away yeah um a lot of times what i end up having to do is like you rotate as you you just got to get used to this is like at least for starters like it you see how i'm rotating and i oh, okay 
this really kind of helps you, you know, because a lot of people talk about in real play, you know, you can move on multiple axes, right? Mm -hmm. You can't do that here, um, but you can kind of get in the zone of doing this. And I'm telling you, when you do hands on a finger, or sorry, um, fingers on a hand, um, it, it, it becomes useful because, like, I get used to making, you know, that's like an intestine, but um, it could be a snake, you know, yeah, yeah. Off, of, off of his plate, you know, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Maybe he's yeah. got like a snake for, up for, yeah, yeah. Get off. But in the low res mode, you know, you can cover a lot of ground, you know. Yeah. The problem isn't adding detail, the problem is blocking shit out like that. Yeah. And doing it in a way that's not goofy um you know and there's other ways like you can cut off the head and make the head symmetrical mm -hmm. even in a pose right mm -hmm. um i don't have i mean i'm sure i don't sure i don't have time right now to show yeah. like how i'll do that yeah. but um I, you know a lot of times i like making an asymmetrical head um yeah. But I, I think we kind of, I think we really get in the idea of your workflow in general. Yeah, like right, and you just want to gradually improve, you know, the the body language mm -hmm. and all that stuff. You know, it's got to grow. It. And as you get higher res, you can, you know, use the decimate option, which is, helps you to push it down. Large, yeah, I don't know if you've used that, but that's I, I've used it. Yeah, yeah. A proxy, nice. a proxy, right? Proxy, if I, how is it? <laughs> proxy image. Yeah. yeah, in one of those modes is better. The one, you know, if you go to proxy slider, the, yeah. this We're... is better, but mm -hmm. it, it blows shit up. Like, <laughs> you'll come back to the high res, there, you'll be running a chance of exploding the file and corrupting it. So I just don't use that one. All right. It's faster. So 3D Coke, guys, I hope you really work on that. <laughs> it's cool. It's like the closest thing we have to subdivision, which if we had like true subdivisions on the fly with, I mean, you know, now you're talking like they would be on a whole nother level, but Hey, you know, I give them credit for what they've done. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyhow, um, you know, I can, I didn't know how much. Of uh, uh, I think, uh, I think overall it uh, was been pretty useful and I don't think we need to carry on. Right. Uh, uh -huh. I think we really, really can wrap it up at this point. Uh, and yeah, well, yeah. Thank you, Josh, for you know for joining for this uh, video and uh, showing the way and how we do it. But, but yeah, you have some cool sketches and uh, cool sculpts. Yeah, there's a lot of different yeah. ones. Like um, you know, I started, you know, I do these little thumbnails and yeah. whatnot. They're just things I'm gonna sculpt uh, later. So. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you for sharing all your tips and tricks, and you know, have a uh, I'll show you know, all the links I'll put in the description and uh, yeah, thanks Definitely for coming. Props to uh, Evan Edmondson, you know, with yeah. his design that I um, like to study and stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah. hope uh, uh, what I showed was of interest or help to anyone yeah. interested in Rico. All right. Well, thank you so much.